So welcome everyone to this session that we're having today. For those of you that are, are longtime members of my community, welcome back. And it's so nice to be here face to face with you on a video sesh because I've been doing a lot of podcasting with audio only lately. So it's nice to put faces into the mix. For those that are new here and don't know me, I'm Bernadette Logue. I'm a spiritual life coach and author and have been doing this work for over 10 years. And I am joined today by my very glad to say friend, Brent, um, who is uh, an incredible human being and has had a uh, huge impact on my life. And I've welcomed him to oh, come and share thanks. again in our community. Um, he has been here before. Uh, Brent is a master hand analyst, a transformation life coach and author and a force to be reckoned with when it comes to understanding your journey, how to overcome sabotaging and shadow patterns, breakthrough on your hero's journey, all of the stuff that we're all about in this community. So um, Brent, can you just tell us a little bit about what what you are as a master hand analyst? You've read over 20,000 hands, I understand, and what it is, this work that you do, transformational coaching to help people. Well, thank you for that beautiful, I mean, Great introduction. And I agree. Yeah, there's a great connection between us. And because I think there's such a, a beautiful mission that 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 we're on. And I just resonated completely um, when I met you the first time. And even even since then, that was what, three years ago. Uh, it's you've been in my brain. So once you're in here, it's really tough to get out because uh, you've been on my mind for literally every week. I, I mean, it. so um the uh, the work that I'm doing is uh, I I'm working based on twin studies actually from the 1980s as well as a, a study of now half a million people's hands. When you are going into any pattern, that's a nervous pattern, and that pattern shows up in your hands, right? And that is what palmists are reading, you know, to try to read your, your future. I'm not doing that. I'm reading a, a neurological pattern right? because your hand shows those different stages of your brain's development. So it's like looking at a functional MRI. Now, when I can show you that, I can show you what type of fixed mindset, which is a big, big language now used. When we talk about transformation, we're talking about what is the pattern you're stuck in? And when we talk about life pattern, if you're stuck in a life pattern, that's obviously the fixed mindset. And, and, and that's normally because you're stressed, though there is some good things that you're you know, called to do. That's also what I read at, at the zone of happiness that produces all your serotonin and dopamine. So I put a simple diagram together to show you your strengths, your talents, and your challenges, and how you can break through those patterns. Amazing. And also, so that people understand, aside from reading hands in this way, and in this incredibly um, deep, insightful information we get from it about our soul's plan and our journey here, our gifts, our talents, our potentiality, our patterns we're running, our shadow and how to break through. You also then take people yeah. on to programs that you do one-on-one -on -one with them called The Shift, where you bring them out mm -hmm. of their saboteur patterns and also The Hero's Journey, where you take them through a, a transformation to integrate what you do from the hand analysis, right? Um, well, some of so, us, yes. <laughs> yeah, okay, good. And I know uh, I know many people in my community have been and had their hand analysis done, mm -hmm. and some have done those pad uh, those programs with you. I found this whole thing that when you did my uh, hand reading, like so insightful, and I am still th almost three years later having aha moments from what you said in those sessions that is burned in my brain. And I didn't necessarily understand it fully at the time, but it's as my life is unfolding, I'm like, I said to you the other day, it's like, oh, that's what Brent was talking about. There's mm. just so much available in bringing this um, knowledge that you can give people into their journey alongside everything else they might be using to understand themselves and to, you know, evolve into their highest potential or live their goals and dreams, whatever it is that people are up for and into right now. But the power mm. in understanding your pattern 
is what I love about what you're sharing is you can shine a light into a dark crevice that people cannot see for themselves. Like, why am I stuck in this pattern? And how mm -hmm. do I get up? So mm -hmm. the other day we talked about what would be a really powerful topic for the community. I've got a lot mm -hmm. of people in my community that are very similar in nature and they actually are not dissimilar to me in some ways. And we had talked about the dynamic that you said a lot of people have and and I have it too. So we were going to talk about that being the, the balance of love and power mm. and how do we be powerful in the world, assertive, achievement oriented um, in our power but how do we do that while still remaining in like an energy of love and surrender so can you talk mm. to us a little bit about this from your perspective and how you see this playing out for people it's the most important topic for people to come to me all right so I was obviously looking at all of the people uh, that I have come for a hand analysis who are struggling and uh Clearly, in the top five are you know victim issues, but the number one is issues around power, and the number two would be you know power with someone else in a relationship versus feeling self empowered. In other words, I can look at a hand and I can see from a fingerprint pattern on the index finger whether you seem to be a, just a. a, a a beaming attraction for narcissists. I can easily see that. Why? Because everybody with the same fingerprint pattern tells me then about the narcissist that they married, right? Just like, wow, you know, what came first, right? The narcissist, the fingerprint pattern, the fingerprint pattern, right? Mm -hmm. So also power struggles in the relationship, people elbowing each other constantly, never years, never being able to resolve a position it's an area I particularly have an interest in because when uh, I married, I married uh, with just my mental side. I was like, she's amazing. She's beautiful. And she's the best um, like creature on uh, that I could have ever seen at Tony Robbins when we met. And then, you know, here's this high profile woman and then come to Switzerland where I am. And then start a family, and she went from this high profile life to you know walking a German shepherd around my my place, and we're suddenly dealing with some major forces, some patterns that she has been in in Romania, and I have been in in America, and we're talking cultural patterns, and they're clashing, boom, you know, these deep seated values. That's a power struggle, and so. It's been a very dear process to me to figure that out. And of course, I'm reading, reading hands. And so I'm reading it and I'm going, I can see your pattern. I can see my pattern. I can see they just don't, they don't mix. But I can look at, I do partner readings all the time. And I can go, you know, this is, you're, she will always have this language of service. I will always have a, a, another language of love. And how do these languages come together? I assure you they do. But it took years to figure it out for myself. And that is where we particularly see the index fingers role in our life. There is a soul pattern that if you're struggling with self-esteem and power struggles, then, and you're this, especially now, if you're feeling that you sometimes go into a pattern where you don't have power and anger or withdrawal is the only thing to resolve that conflict, come to me because that is the thing that you can solve really fast, really fast. Wow. I'm really talking like only in a few days where instead of years and you think of the amount of money and time and relationship and health that you're, you're, you're dealing with. So it's not, I'm not going to, you know, sell anything magical. It's not like a magic bullet. You have to do the work. But there's a particular mm -hmm. type of work that is needed around boundaries and kindness and crucial conversations, which is a, a topic that I later invite you to go into uh, after the shift in the heroes in the process of the hero's journey to reclaim your life through um, the vision that you have. So uh, I, that was a roundabout way of of kind of giving an anecdotal version of the, your answer. If I was to give it a little bit more clear. Power shows up in the Jupiter finger, the index finger. For 400,000 years, we have evolved 
that way. The hand is a mirror of your personality. So different hands have different personalities. If you give me a hand, I can see everyone with your hand type has the same personality. Somebody with a big, thick index finger like Donald Trump has a lot of power. Someone mm. with a small index finger, like it drops below that, very mm. passive. And then, so the fingerprint does, if you look at a fingerprint, it has circles and sometimes there's a crushing, looks like a crushing energy right on that index finger, like a, an arch pattern. That's a power mm -hmm. struggle. You're waiting to, to be in a pattern of avoidance, if, if that's the case. That's an epigenetic pattern that came from your ancestors. Thank you, your grandmother and your grandfather <laughs> for that, and World <laughs> War II. Well, thank you for your like authentic heart -led sharing of your own experience of this pattern in your life. Um, you picked my you, you had my personality and my stuff down like like that instantly when you did my hand analysis I was like oh yes <laughs> this is wild that he can like do this process with you on your hand and know exactly what's going on and um you know we can talk about I'm very happy to talk about my power struggles like that is a huge mm. part of my journey you picked it up immediately in my prints it's a part of my numerology as well power is a really big thing to learn and I think there's a lot of people and particularly I'll speak to women there's a lot of women in my community that are in a sense of powerlessness um, have lost their power very early in life um, are experiencing that power issue inside relationships now have got a power love thing going on inside their intimate relationship but also about being out in the world hang on a minute I've just dropped my earbud um People in my community know I'm all over the show. I'm always dropping my earbuds. Um, you know, that also not just in relationships with our partners, for example, but when we're out in the world, how do we be in our loving energy and in our sensitive, soft, big-hearted spiritual energy out in the world, but deal with this sense of how, how do you be powerful in the world when there's an immense power structure in society it's a very it can mm -hmm. be a very challenging world out there so how do we navigate that like I've had to learn how to navigate that so we can mm. we can talk we can talk to that as well um so when you have someone come to you and you can see this power love thing playing out what is the primary um where do you see it primarily playing out do you see it primarily playing out in their intimate relationship or in yes. their that's yeah. where it first is showing up. Yeah, that's where it gets really loud, right? So living with somebody is where it gets really yeah. loud. And then yeah. the the dynamics with your kids, that's where it gets really loud. Anywhere yeah. there's a trigger possibility. It also plays out in, you know, long-term, you know, work relationships and the politics at work, obviously, if you have, a power struggle pattern, then it's just a matter of time before you're put in the best position. And then somebody is going to have another idea what your job should be and then come sideways, right? So, mm -hmm. but the, the where it hurts the most is in the relationship. Let's talk about two types of power to just to make things simple. But, mm -hmm. you know, we can go down the rabbit hole here really fast, but let's just talk about two types power there's power out in the world which we see in the right hand mm -hmm. and your relationship to the power figures out in the world that's the right hand and then there's the relationship you have with yourself in the left hand by the way your hands changed it's nice to see after three years you've become a very softer feminine version because your hands you can uh, see that already it's <laughs> very very gentle and more emotional i get if you compare yeah. who you were three years ago and you look and raise your hand now, right? Raise your hand right now. See, see how pink and 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 soft that hand is. If you mm -hmm. if you push it, it's like a little bit squishy. Yeah. Uh -huh. And uh -huh. <laughs> if you look at the photo that you sent me of your hand three years ago, it's you could drive a tractor over it. You probably wouldn't feel it. It's a really oh, tough, so rational mm -hmm. hand. So you were really going into a intellectual pattern. That rationality or over rationality was a sabotaging pattern. That, and it convinces yes. you that when you're in it, 
that as long as you're being rational, polite, fair, you'll get your needs met. But actually, that's what causes the sabotaging pattern that pushes away. So yes. that trigger happens. You get rational more when you get into the power struggle because you got this composite on the right index finger. So and if we take the two types of power, personal mm -hmm. power and power out in the world, let's just take, mm -hmm. I'll give you an example of when it is there and when it's missing for both examples, okay? Okay, perfect. So let's say you had a circle on your right index finger, right? Let's say you had a big, big, tall index finger that says, I'm idealistic. That's how you are, is your, your personal pattern that you go into to protect yourself. I am Mrs. Idealistic. That's when the index finger gets pretty tall like that. And the fingerprint has a big circle, like a bullseye there, all right? Everyone's looking at in, in, in the light to see if they mm -hmm. have it right now. Mm -hmm. So if you have that, that means that your soul really resonates at a high frequency and you feel naturally fulfilled holding power, right? So it's not a surprise that if I go in and I do like a board of directors, like I did for TEDx and you know the sponsors there, and uh, I'm reading all of the hands, I'm getting all of the circles on the index finger. These guys love it. They just gravitate in all their situations. They're constantly looking for greatness and growth and vision and planning. That's all they want. Those are good key words, by the way. Awesome. If if you don't have it, the more that I push you into a situation where you're the decision maker and you're having to hold the accountability of the vision for more people, you start to go in a contracted, intimidated response, which you might be able to hold, but then there'll be other people that are also wanting to have a vision and expectations for you. And now you're having to align and collaborate with that vision. And in that place, you're getting more increasingly overwhelmed and being able to say no. And as you do that, you start to get into a stress of a withdrawal and you go into a pattern. That pattern is what I'm reading in your hand. It's very, very uh, specific. Like you, as I said, you go into a rational pattern. Somebody might go into a bull in the China shop pattern. Some people might be aggressive. Another person based, if it's a really soft hand might be passive. In that mm -hmm. case, it's still a stress. They're just dealing with the stress in them to get themselves out of it by going into what they think is a a known way of protection. It's called a personality. Mm -hmm. And you have developed this. You got really good at it by age seven. And after that, mm -hmm. your hand looked like pretty much what it does today, unless you went through major, major personality changes, which can happen. So that's that's outer power. On the inner side, left hand, same thing applies. But now we're looking at the relationship of your own personal confidence and independence and your need to go in an independent way. So let's say that you have a circle on your left index finger, right? So if we choose famous examples, let's just choose a famous example for the right one. You got Richard Branson, I have his, his handprints. Mm -hmm. so you got a circle on his index finger. If you go to the left and you're looking at somebody super passionate, doesn't really care so much about outer power. So power over people doesn't really care. He just wants to live a passionate life of independence and look what he can do. So imagine, I don't know if you have ever heard a guy named Neil Strauss, but when I read his book, The Game, it's a really funny book of this geek who was so frustrated being a Rolling Stones writer and interviewing Tom Cruise and Madonna and still being almost a virgin, you know, he was very late. And, and still not really getting it. And he's like, the next, my next book is going to be about a guy who just has all the passion about pickup artists and how they can't stop sleeping with women. And he was like, I want that as a problem. That would be a great problem to have, okay. given that he obviously was in a drought for most of his life. So he, he writes the book and ultimately the book is about his transformation, ultimately living with Gwen Stefani and living in Hugh Hefner's mansion. That's a guy who's reclaiming his passion, right? That's the right life for him. And of course, it creates a big problem when he also has in his pattern to have a family. So he's got to come somehow negotiate that. That's a person of passion. Mm -hmm. And whenever I read their hands, the whole focal point of their happiness is, do I have free 
will and passion and, and to be able to go and do every master class and all the things that I've ever dreamed and, you know, jump out of an airplane and live in Taiwan if I want to, whatever the case is, right? That's their freedom. And so everything after that is nice, but don't take away the toy. If that's not there, let's say that's contracted. Well, you get more the dream of passion, but not really a living a life of passion. Great example. Let's take a famous one. Mm -hmm. A famous one is Walt Disney, who dreamed a lot about passion. I have his fingerprints because, you know, uh, the FBI collects in, in the United States people's mm -hmm. hands. And, and, uh, uh, and you, you can see he's got this beautiful contraction, right? So if you look at who he was as a human being, was he really jumping out of, of uh, uh, planes and sleeping with everybody he wants? No, he was henpecked by his wife. He was belittled. He couldn't even join the military when it was appropriate to do so. He was belittled for making cartoons. So he tried to do an advertising agency or join an advertising agency. And then ultimately he, he ultimately funded uh, uh, I think it was Snow White at that time. So he built this empire, but always being this kind of geeky guy, never really living a life of passion. He dreamed of it and he wrote a lot of it. So you can dream all the, all the time and have very bossy. When that guy could have had any Snow White, <laughs> any Disney princess. I mean, at that stage, he could have had anybody, but he has this woman who henpecks him all the time. That's a pattern. So you, you think, Richard Branson does not have that pattern, right? Let's take an opposite one, a famous opposite one, Johnny Depp, right? So when I read Johnny's fingerprints, he's got these tented arches, real contracted fingerprint there, right? So just put yourself in the Amber Heard trial, right? If you saw it, I got greatly mm -hmm. entertained knowing his fingerprints and seeing how he was reacting. It's a guy who's being bossed around. Now, Richard Branson would never be in a trial like that with a, a wife that was chasing him in a bathroom. Are you kidding me? It's Richard Branson. And somehow in the way that he's able to step into his power, he would, with dignity, mm -hmm. resolve it with a boundary. And that's the thing when you have the fingerprint, you can't see that as an option in your stress pattern. You don't see it. You're just ah. so you are running a pattern which is avoidance or power struggle or you mm -hmm. have broken through the shadow pattern and you have different mechanisms to overcome that this is then shifting in response because you've said this these actually shift right as we shift as we understand mm -hmm. the pattern we evolve and do the work on ourselves your, your hands actually go yeah, the your hands have changed you? you've done some shifting clearly so wow. your 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 hands go through a rapid evolution uh, in the inner hero's journey. I take make sure everyone takes a photo of their hands before and after uh, so that they can see for themselves that their hand has gotten like sometimes when you're in a, uh, an avoidance pattern, your index starts to, I can't even do it. It does that, it goes really weird like a banana or in the opposite. So look at your fingers. If you have some bendy fingers, you're in an insecure pattern. Also, for women, super important. Women are emotional and loving and connecting and that's their superpower. But when you're in a relationship that emotions don't matter somehow, and you're just making dinner and being a, in the service story, your hands dry up. So you look like a man's hand, right? And so actually after the shift, people's hands change. So that's just the, the three day uh, um, breakthrough that you go through. And what you do is you go through and I show you neurologically what you freak out about. And then I have you feel it so that you stop going to DEFCON 5 around it. You go into a place of compassion and empathy when you're in it. And that is what has you live in the creative way that Richard Branson does when he's in a conflict. In fact, he goes looking for conflict. He's found that there's a value. He goes and says, wherever the conflict is, is the creative potential of an organization or a couple. And so if you can find that, you know, wherever the conflict is, that's the area that's going to make a breakthrough. 
Once I figured that out, then I started seeing huge breakthroughs in women that were stuck in power dynamics. The guy was not paying for child support. The, uh, the guy ran out, no commitment issues. She's not really seen vulnerably. And three days later, they have a whole different life because they got in touch with what their power is and they have to experience a different way. So it's one thing to, to go take a course and realize, huh, I feel well done Tony Robbins and have stood on my chair in front of 3000 right. people. Can mm -hmm. I go do it? Fine, but you have to go do it. And yes, there, and there have to, and you have to refer sometimes to, quite a few times to the recording of the hand analysis, because you're going to get into a different mindset and then you're going to go uh, and then you go unconscious and then you're back into the dumb pattern that you've been doing since ages. Mm -hmm. so it, mm -hmm. it, it's like a Shakespearean play that keeps repeating over and repeating over and over. itself and it's very minutes. easy as well for when you're inside your pattern um before you do this work <laughs> it's very easy when you're inside your pattern particularly when it comes to relationships to point your finger outward to say well if this person would just do this Mm. And if this employer would just not be so demanding, and if this right. workmate was just not so toxic, and if this partner would just actually like listen to me, and if my children yeah. would just, and it's all of this. And of course, we have no power in that because most of us have attempted to then affect those relationships to no advancement. Mm. So then you're only left with yourself. And the the confronting thing about this is, is when you see it in your hands, is you're like, oh, I am fully a participant in this. <laughs> it's literally written on my hand. I am literally actively at a neurological level, a saboteur, shadow pattern level creating and this. neurologically, I hate these people, right? Neurologically, mm. Brent's reading it in my hands and, and neurologically, these people somehow show up as a tyrant for this person, but not to the others. So neurologically, yes. you're kind of in a, a, a frustrating uh, situation. And no, neurologically, no matter how much yoga you do, he's still a tyrant. That is, yeah, right. exactly, exactly right. So shall we talk about, like, I'll share a little bit about my power love thing, because right. I think it's um, a useful demonstration for the women, particularly women, I love you men, I love you and you're all welcome here, but particularly for the women, like I've got a community and all the women have got a lot of similarities and it's all, like it's really common as a challenge. Yeah. So I knew that I had power issues because it was in my numerology, it was in my astrology charts, but when I met you, it became really, really clear, like you immediately picked up, you are in a struggle with authority. So yeah. I had like a really prominent inside of me rejection of authority how do I be in the world when the entire world is structured with like really heavy authoritarian system structures people telling you what to do um authority struggles in my work but I had bosses that were just the loveliest people who'd let me do whatever I wanted to do but inside of me I had rejection of authority fear of authority fear of something happening to me if authority decided they wanted to do something to me and a complete lack of ownership of my power so I look like on the surface for the first 35 years, very powerful because I'm confident, but it is entirely ego and it is completely self-protection and it is a hard wall, which is like, keep away from me. I'm powerful. <laughs> You're not allowed in any further. And it is entirely a suit of armor to protect me. But you can only go so far in life with that strategy. And I'm sure that people that have got a similar print to me or a similar that power love thing would have a different pattern like you talked about. Like some people would go in avoidance and powerlessness, whereas I just mm -hmm. went fully into using power in a pretty unhealthy way to keep people at a distance. But that doesn't work because you get so far in life and you realize I'm running my pattern and it keeps me safe. Right. So it keeps me away from things that I don't want to deal with and it keeps me protected from certain things, but it keeps love out and it keeps growth out and it keeps evolution out. So you said to me in my hand analysis, you may not remember it, but you said there is you need to melt the ice. You need to melt mm -hmm. that. You literally said you need to melt the ice. And I was like, what is this man talking about? 
Yeah, you will. And then it became really clear to me that's what this was. Is I was just so in my logic and so in my masculine, and so like I've got this together. And um, the power love thing for me was learning to like let go of that power struggle and really allow myself to be vulnerable and authentic and realizing that for me, love is the divine. The love is what keeps me safe. I don't need Mm. shadows and I don't need patterns and I don't Mm. need devices of these behaviors with people to keep me safe and for me to be in my full power in the world when I know that love being this the soul that I am and the source I come from that is the truth of reality and that is ever present everywhere that's what keeps me safe and I think that's how I managed to melt the ice was that it's not risky for me to let go of those defenses where when so we agree that where you were and we agree how you acted based on your hand type, you have a headline that goes straight down here. So that's ultra rational. Mm -hmm. You're get tucked and your, your hand at the time was super dry, which means you get to look at the skin ridges across, you know, four feet away and you can still see the skin ridges and uh, now clearly soft. So when you're in the stress pattern, you're thinking in a certain way, Mm -hmm. you're, you're justifying it with a belief that your the mind is the most important thing to solve this puzzle yeah. that you're in. Yeah. Obviously, there's other components, but the mind is the arrogant position that it's taking. Yeah. It's saying, I, as long as I can figure this out and read more and learn more, then I will always be able to get the life that I want. So yes. it is egoistic, but that is mm-hmm. what the ego is. It's an, it's just the pattern that I see in the hand and different ego. There's different types of egos. In fact, there's 144. But when in any case, the, what I'm curious about, since we do see the, the change, the transformation, and everything that you're saying is, is explaining the transformation that somebody does go through. And as a living example, you have realized with your composite, you have on your right index finger, like S, like superwoman. Mm-hmm. And which means it's a swing. It's almost like a bipolar swing. I'm powerful. I'm the general. And then I'm not. And I just want to be mm-hmm. a student in life. And I want just to learn for a while. I don't want to boss. You. And then I got to be powerful. And I'm like, I want to do something. And so you go into these, these massive swings there, but that's okay. That's not going to change. It's, it's part of the way that your limbic system regulates itself. And it needs to do that mm-hmm. in order to find meaning in both centers. Just honor that. But the point is, is that your transformation, you came to a Zen point of experience mm-hmm. that could only be achieved by recognizing that when you go into too much, you go into, uh, it's it's the Bernadette show, right? It's mm-hmm. ego. And then too mm-hmm. little, then... I am intimidated, right? So there's mm-hmm. this Zen. Now it's important. You have these nine other fingers, right? Not it's not just this one. But when you're in the contraction, you're only using this part of your nervous system, which means mm-hmm. you have the intelligence of a rhesus monkey when you are in your power constriction. Imagine. And that means that in that pattern, your rational self is the only thing that shows up to that person. And if they happen to have a reaction to whatever sabotaging pattern, in your case, rational, some people really love rational, some people can't dig it at all. If they have that reaction, that means that we now have an interpersonal conflict. Mm -hmm. Now, the way to break through that is to relax that sabotaging pattern with empathy Mm -hmm. and to understand that that doesn't need to be the only tool in the toolkit. And a woman's most important power is her love Mm. and, and power without love is very tyrannical and women Mm -hmm. really get rational and they go get competitive. So that's not going to work ever as being a competitive, rational person. That's called argumentative. And then there's the other side, which is power or love, but without power, then that's very intimidated. And it's maybe you didn't get to that very much, but it was, uh, it's anemic, it's passive Mm -hmm. avoidance. So when there's a conflict, you just procrastinate 
and you don't let, you give it to time and hopefully this whole thing will blow over and maybe the next time we'll see each other different and then you'll, or you'll speed up because you're rational and your brain will speed up and try to get more information in, in order to resolve this quicker, right? Both cases, mm -hmm. they're getting speedy Gonzalez or they're going and getting this argumentative person that you don't maybe resonate with. So now that was a, my lead up to the speed question, which is how did you break through that? Do, do, do you recognize that you went to both sides? And yeah. did you yeah. see, yeah. Do you, how did you break through that for the women that are now, I'm certain that you've got a good portion of the people listening right now. So they're looking at their hands yeah. and going, wow, long fingers. Yeah, I'm rational. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, first of all, the pattern would run in the outer and the inner like this. In the outer, I would be like, I need to get out in the world and I need to do really powerful things. I can feel the power coming through me. I love it. I want to do everything. I want to see everything. And then the opposite was, oh gosh, no, I need to run away and live in the countryside. I can't, I don't want to deal with any of this. I don't want to see any people. I literally don't want to be around people. I want to just hide away. And I did that. And I literally geographically did that. I did it in my career. I did it. I literally did it. I literally ran away and lived in the countryside. I did, and I would go out into the world again and I would retreat back. But it was not in a here's an interesting thing. You can run patterns and they you kind of know they're happening, but they're just there. And they're not like you don't really consciously see that they're actually happening until someone points it out to you from your hand or from some other form of wisdom, and you can look at it. And if you really look honestly at it. And I think this is the absolute key, is I looked at myself willing to see the cold, hard truth. To feel the shame, to feel the regret, to feel the, the fear, to feel the, the everything that your ego does not want to see, mm. that you are completely avoiding to seeing. That was the external pattern. The internal pattern was inside relationships. I'm very powerful. I want to be a leader, but also like want everybody to feel love so then I want to make sure that everybody is like I want to please and I want to make sure Accommodate that everything style. is fine and I, I don't want any conflict and so this then would go like this right so very powerful strong Arbulent. person very but also don't want to make anything like I don't want to rock the boat so very confusing mm -hmm. so following you you were a breakthrough for me because when I got the hand analysis I had done as much as I could do with all of the different sources of wisdom and the self reflection and the growth and I was told hard in my logical mind and in my do 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 masculine make things happen and you opened up for me to see that there was there was a needing of a softening and it happened at a time when I also went through um, some spiritual quests and journeys and it reflected the exact same messages that you had given to me so it came from two different angles and what I realized was, if I keep going this way, like literally nothing in my life is going to change or it is going to decimate. Like there is no there is no growth if I stay in the pattern because the pattern is literally just looping. And so if I want to be more in my power, more in love, more in connection, more in community, more in all the things that were part of my heart's yearning and my soul's yearning, which you know, because you just feel it inside. If I want that, something has to shift and it's not out there. It's only in here. And so there is something running in me that I'm not seeing or I've not been willing to see. And I think when you said melt the ice, I was like, what ice? <laughs> I was like, what ice is he talking about? And then I was like, oh, if he's right, then what is the ice? And the ice was like an armor. It was being mm -hmm. in the logical mind, not being in the heart center. And so I just started to look at it and say, okay, well, if I am the cause of this effect in my relationship, if I am the cause of this effect in my business, then what are my behaviors and ways of being, my patterns I'm running? that are clearly contributing to this and let me name them, write them down, say exactly why I'm running that as a coping mechanism or a strategy, and then mm -hmm. come up with an alternative that is softer mm -hmm. and gentler. And I literally called on the divine. I was like, I need you to download to me, to fill me up with love so I can show up in these situations as a different being. I'm ready. I know what I've been doing and I know that I can be a different way. And then I literally just practice my butt off. Like I did the work. Like I was like, oh, I'm running the pattern. Okay, like this is not anybody else's responsibility. 
and I am not going to get a different outcome unless I literally stop right now <laughs> and like like process the feelings I'm having, right? And a lot of it for me was um, self-protection, yeah. safety mechanisms, just safety mm. mechanisms because I never felt safe in the world. Even mm. from very, very young as a little child, I was like, this world isn't safe. And so I need a huge armor on and I mm. need to have bolstered big power because that's protection. But like you, like you said to me, there can be no, just, just whatever words you used back then, it was like there can't be any connection from the heart out to the world for the work that my soul came to do if I have a huge like barrier up that's just it's the same gonna work um and so like my devotion and the reason I did the work and took what you said really seriously and implemented it and have that had this experience of shifting is because I'm really devoted to the unseen like I'm really devoted to love and consciousness God created divinity I've seen it, I've experienced it as I've felt it. Like people think I do this because I really want to save people, help people. If that's what people think, that's not. I'm so devoted to the loving truth of the universe and I want to and yeah, do my yeah, work. Yeah. I want to yeah. do the work that I came here to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so that's really what drove things me. things I want to mirror, reflect back to you, but in my language, what you went through. Okay. Uh, number one, your soul is on a mission in mm -hmm. this lifetime. Everyone's is, by the way. It's just think of it as far as I've observed, and this is coming from the founder as well of the Institute of Hand Analysis, is that we observe that we're all a herd species. You know, human beings are a herd, herd animal, and you have different, you know, ones that are like the 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 blue collar collies, you know, that, that are like signaling and communicating. Right. And then the other people are like just keeping the structure, you know, and other people mm -hmm. are making and holding the other. You have totally different roles in society of that express different slices of this human consciousness. And those windows are very evident in the high ranking circles in the fingerprints of which what, what is your role in this this scheme of planet Earth? That's very clear. Like. That's evident from just looking at 10 people's hands, you'll see it. Wow. But, so there's a there's a mission. And what the way that life rewards you when you are in the right life doing something is you get this experience called fulfillment. Now, some mm -hmm. people get it once or twice a week. Other people are living it. I'm certainly living in it. Uh, but for years I wasn't, I was kind of getting it on Saturdays and Sundays. And sometimes, uh, in the projects I was working in software robotics, a previous life, but I wasn't, I, I knew that I was like, oh, I can't just, I can't imagine. I'm just going to keep doing this right over and over. And, but if I don't, I'm going to have money issues and I need to be, uh, and at that time I was making $300,000 and I still thinking I'm going to have money issues if I leave that. Right. It's crazy weird but that's the thinking so the point of that i'm saying is that the soul is coming into this lifetime to experience fulfillment it's one and the way that it does it is experience and experience is the area outside of that pattern i just showed you right that oh, fixed, just say that again say that again oh this is just oh, just so that everybody really gets that the soul's come in on a mission the mission is fulfillment you ain't going to get it inside your pattern. You've yeah. got to break your pattern. That is like, at all costs, break your pattern. <laughs> it, it's it's a movie you already know. So the soul isn't going to, you're drinking the same thing over and over. You But you got a result back in 1984 that said, this is, I'm going to get that. And I got it again in 1985 and I got it with my sister. And then later I got it as I went to college and all that. I got these, these, these experiences that made my life predictable. And so, but it doesn't give you life fulfillment. It gets your kind of needs for acceptance or security, or at least you think it does. It gives you a sense of independence. In fact, there's a book out if, uh, everyone should read and take and do an assessment called positive intelligence and you can do a like five minute assessment just google positive intelligence and it will tell you 10 your one of your 10 sabotaging patterns and it'll rank them then what you do is you send me your hands and i will show you where those patterns are 15 minutes just to have a look 
I will show that to you. And if you're interested, you can sign up for a hand analysis. If not, I got a value because I got to see again that this is a based and rooted in parts of your brain. Okay, so positive intelligence. There, there is a, what Sherzad is saying in his book is that when you are in the fixed pattern that sabotaging, you are moving into the limbic brain of a survival mode of a cockroach. Mm -hmm. You're just basically doing the same thing in order to get, but that's sabotaging because you don't get any fulfillment in it. And it often mm -hmm. creates the direct opposite of that, which you're wanting. A lot of times when you're in a power struggle, it creates the exact opposite effect of how you're being, right? Tyrannical or whatever. Mm -hmm. So that's point one. When you step out of it into sage mode is what he calls it. But what we call it is a, a more nourishing pattern in your case, love, as well as you have a circle on your right little finger, which says this is the area since the Greeks they've identified as communication and connection and making connections and being the, uh, so you're the, you're the blue collie that's like, you know, hurting everybody and being the signal saying, this is guys, we need to go here. Sorry, we got, we got to go. Everyone soul is over here. Your human race, we need to go here. So you have a message for humanity and thank God because of the star that you have down in your headline, mm -hmm. you are able to access this realm of, of the soul region. Uh, among many other things that I read in the hand. So when you're in that, out of the sabotaging, you're able to access your life purpose, which is the all of your fingerprints expressed, or let's say all parts of your nervous system that are now expressed in full and you're fully self-expressed, which means that was your wedding day and you felt like, my gosh, I, everyone listened to me and it was filled with love and I was in passion and it was, uh, uh, I, I felt the status as well. And I was a woman of influence. All I had to do is say, well, I suggest that we go ahead and start dinner now and everyone's setting place. I mean, that's, that's exactly being in that energy. When you get triggered, the whole thing collapses. The nervous mm -hmm. system collapses based on the vagal nerve. It goes in and it goes and says, let's just <clears throat> prioritize. <laughs> And the moment you put a priority to your nervous system, you're saying this part is better than that part. And that mm. part is not going to get fulfilled. So life becomes unfulfilling. And so you're stuck in it and you do anything for 28 days. And especially if you have some trauma from what happened and you remember that trauma at the time that you're trigger, or it becomes a repetitive stress disorder, like telling your kids to mm. you know, clean up their room for the 28th time. You're just, mm -hmm. ah, was it fine before? Those triggers then become habitual. So as soon as we even start to move in that level of the direction and the relationship or that argument that we've argued about food and what to feed the kids or whatever, as soon as we even start that, you're already into the stress pattern and it may take a while for you to get out of it. And that's what the trigger yeah. is. So I can get you out of those things. If it's bothering you, check it out. Hand analysis gets mm. you out of the triggers. I love it so much. I'm so obsessed with your work. Like it's it's just awesome. Everybody get it done. Like it's so game changing. And I think, you know, one of the things I thought about when before we got on the call about this whole power and love thing, which so many of us women have powerlessness, fear of our own power, fear of the power out there, but I'm also filled with love and I want to be on a mission and I want to share my work and I want to, you know, connect with more people, but I'm also here because I'm not feeling powerful and I'm feeling low self-esteem or whatever it is and I, I don't feel safe. There's also a thing around with this whole fear of power is, is a little bit of an extreme black and white this or that. Like I'm either going to be that or I'm going to be this. And I think the revelation for me was it's both. Like you can be very powerful in action, in achievement mode, in utilizing the best of your logic and this beautiful, big moving energy and be soft and receptive and filled with love and have love drive. I kind of think of it like, you know, in, in my program in Soul Odyssey, a lot of the women ask me questions when it comes to be love. So we talk about embodying love and being love in the world. 
as like a core component, like love is who we are, right, at our core. But then the question comes, how do I be loving and surrendered also at powerful and in action? How do I be surrendered but taking a lot of action? How do I be retaining my loving open heart but be really powerful out in a world that's really challenging? And the answer is it's both. And for me, the love is the who, what, why, how, everything. It's where you come from. It's the you'll come from position. It's the seed of who you are. It's who you choose to be in the world. It's why you do what you do. And it's the driver of what you choose. So I choose because my loving heart says I want to do this. Like it's inspired. It's passionate. It's where my soul wants to go. And I'm yeah. using power as a healthy, love-driven way to be in the world. Like love is my power. Are they separate things? Or is love my power? <laughs> it's you know, being able to safely feel like you can utilize your power. And I've noticed that a lot of people don't even feel like you've said about setting boundaries and saying no. People have said, well, how do I set boundaries and say no, but still be loving? I'm like, what makes you think they're two different things? Like setting a boundary <laughs> is love. It is love to set a boundary. It is the most, like if I'm with oh. someone and I'm not resonant with them, the most loving thing that I could possibly do is give them a hard no. Oh, you see that with kids I, I, all the time, right? Yeah. Right. Well, that's a perfect example. So so like if a woman was listening to this and she's got children and she knows that giving a hard no and a boundary is the most loving thing she can do for a child, that's also the most loving thing you can do out in the world when someone judges you on social media. Give yeah. them a hard no. And that's being loving. Or, you know, stop a partnership that's not resonating with you or whatever it is. And so I think there's some misconceptions and perceptions around the word power and the word love and and like some very fairy tale views of those two words, but actually they're very related. Um, and I think if we bring love as the core of who we are and we use that to say, how can I be powerful in the world coming from a place of love, it starts to become a combined picture, uh, love and power both, not uh, this or that. And I think, um, I don't know if you've seen this with people with this pattern, but I found it is that I would often go into power and I would lose my connection to my center because I would be so busy doing and being in the dynamic of how do I be powerful sure. and deal with all these authority figures outside of me, I would lose connection to myself. And I think a lot of women on a spiritual path that are very sensitive and loving, they don't ever want to lose that connection to that part of themselves. And it's like, how do I do this out in the world? And how do I be really busy and running my business and doing all these things and not lose myself and my loving, soulful center? And I think the answer is you got to practice. you got to make it a priority. you got to know what it looks like and feels like, what, what feels right, what doesn't feel right, what your values are and how you want to move through the world. And then you have to practice breaking the patterns when they show up. Yeah, I've got uh some heavy examples for there, right? Not in people's lives and in my own life, how I moved into a place of power in my life. The, um, the first is you can fight to the, to the end of your life. And through this, you know, sometimes it's explored in alchemy, this calcification process where you just go F it, right? Mm -hmm. Just let it burn, let the world burn, right? Yep. Sometimes that is the answer, which is annihilation. Mm -hmm. Because what you're saying there is I, I can't fight anymore. And that yep. now is a boundary. And yeah. you have to really be able to love yourself and have the empathy of yourself enough to make that. The shift is the calcification process where you look to the end of your life going, I can't do that anymore. I can't. Yes. So that's number one is to be able to be swallowed up by the dragon and have the courage to do it and just go, I can't just to be recognized. And if there's part of you that I, I know that that's okay. And that's so hard when you have an overwhelming pattern that says I got to serve everybody and be the answer for everybody around me. And I become after that. And so they neglect themselves into a constant pattern where they don't, and they verbalize it as the ego does in time. And they say, I don't have time for myself. And of course you don't, because that's a dumb story that you keep telling. Yes, so you surrender. Yes. So the way that I observed it with my own life, having taken Tony Robbins and read every book, crucial conversations and negotiation and trying to, you know, 
put throw with my wife into every self-help program so I can fix her problem so I can have a good life, right? The way that it got solved for us, the biggest issue is I just said, I'm done. I'm done. I can't, I can't anymore. Now I'm not divorcing you, but I can tell you that I, with my power and your pattern, we can't, we're not going any place and we need to get help because we can't, we're running into this and it's not what it wasn't that bad, but it was enough to be freaking irritating enough on a, on an almost every other day basis of an argument or, you know, she's going through the roof with the kids. And I just was like, done. I can't, I can't handle it. And the kids, unfortunately, mirror the mother the most in the house. The, the kids really mother, mirror the, the, your shadow pattern. So when you go into it, the kids see an unregulated mother. They see a, a, a mother who cannot regulate her emotions. So she's going into the sabotaging pattern. When your kids get see that, even though you may verbalize as I'm just being rational or I'm just being uh, you know, busy and I'm serving, whatever. Whenever they see that, they get a massive disconnect because you're no longer in your nervous system and they're feeling of complete withdrawal. And what do you think they're going to do? So you're teaching them to withdraw. So it's, it's seeing the importance in the, and with empathy and look at the pattern is number, number one and see it with empathy that at this point for the kindness that I have, I am not able to fix something that God seems to have been written in my biology and I need help. I need mm -hmm. support. So loving yourself enough to make that boundary, that self boundary is job number one. It's like, you know, and you got to love yourself enough. Like when you're in the plane, you get the oxygen mm -hmm. mask on yourself before you start fixing the relationship. So how do I, I, that's weird because I know that it's her. I know for a fact it's her, but it's me, but it's her, right? So what's happening is, is that she's mirroring also my pattern. And if I show up every time triggered, what she's seeing is, Brent triggered and Brent triggered is I become authoritative. I become controlling mm -hmm. and I, and I don't like that aspect of it. I'm like, kids, all right, you know, you got to finish your dinner and then you can leave the table, right? That's what's happening now. Whoa. Right. That's, that's the controller, right? Obviously I can handle it better when I'm in empathy, but that's the controller. That's what mm -hmm. I think is the only way to get my need for security and acceptance there. And so I go into that. So Number two is recognizing with empathy, I do that. And it seems like I don't have a choice and they don't listen any other way than if I go into that pattern, that fixed mindset. So it took some distance to be able to look empathetically, man, I'm just going to continue doing this till I die. And at mm -hmm. least nor normal human being is going through their stress sabotaging pattern 70% of the time, unless you know you have great coaching conversations like this. So once you can understand it and you can name it, then you can also ask your partner to uh, name them by getting a hand analysis. You can see, hey, we got it. Positive intelligence is a very basic way of 10 saboteurs. I've got about 500, I can tell you. So whatever the case is, I can get a very precise definition of your trigger and, and who you act. And it's not awesome. And then, and mm -hmm. the same thing for your partner. And you have two unstoppable forces meeting the movable object all the time. You have a choice and that choice is empathy. And the first place to re dissolve that is not after you finish your self-love to say, I can't. And with empathy, I have this pattern. I don't know how to get out of it is then to make it okay. Then can you make the sabotaging jerk that you're seeing? Okay. With empathy. That means your narcissist and your tyrant out there and the person who's betraying the, your boundaries, believe it or not, and it's ta I'm talking black belt karate stuff, the stuff mm -hmm. I have to work with. People have gone through sexual abuse by their father and you got to somehow mm -hmm. make that okay. But mm -hmm. what do you want? You want to wake up every day with a in your head that you have a, a, a father that you've never forgiven, who did sexual, who molested you? Or you want to wake up with the woman who has power to go, what you did 
is unforgivable and wrong. And I'm forgiving you in this lifetime because I need to move on. Mm. And that way, the moment that happens, she gets her entire vitality back. And she ends up finding a, a level of nourishment that what happens is the epigenetic pattern of the stress that you're carrying all the time when you think of the father or your narcissistic, whoever, mother, law, whatever, that then releases. When that happens, the epigenetic goes out into an expression, just like if you were put a cell in a, in a Petri dish, that's epigenetics, the culture becomes nourishing. And when you do that and you've cleared up, then you're in a nourishing culture. Guess what? All the stem cells then begin to open up the system. And what happens to most people in the shift, I can show you all the before, go look on my website, The Power in Your Hands. You look at the before after photos, they look 10 years younger. Mm. It's not an exaggeration. I'm not making anybody do more yoga or get on a diet. We're literally talking seven days later, they look like, severely change like they're completely look about 10 years out of a bad marriage and they're now completely younger it looks like they went the opposite direction for men and women and mm -hmm. they're really getting their vitality back they're getting their nervous yeah. system back so they're getting that shadow pattern which we carl Jung was saying is the divorce of this is not me i'm not going to be that and i mm -hmm. can't get angry anymore so i'll just add, add that part to the box called I don't access. I'm not a person mm -hmm. who ever gets angry, right? And I'm saying, no, make your anger okay. Get angry, get it out. That's the part in the shift. And that, that when you go into it, it will feel like anger. But at some point, that anger will then start to alchemize into your spirit that has been lost. And that spirit mm. is then becomes a motivational force in your life to reclaim love and without it trying to be nice is inauthentic and you become passive aggressive so what we're doing is we're moving right into the center of that thing and you're able to go alchemize it and then you can go into the third thing which you said so beautifully hold it hold both forces mm -hmm. so i uh can't remember the guy's nickname nook the guy who's uh the the buddhist who uh, passed recently tick knack, whatever. He said the same thing. You, you go into um, it's suffering and you meet it with empathy wherever you see it. So you yeah. hold the anger and whatever degree of anger that you have, as we say in Texas, God bless your heart. So you're a complete tyrannical uh, um, jerk. God bless your heart, right? Mm -hmm. And in that place, you're meeting it, the judgment which is the reason why you're in the pattern. You're now meeting the judgment and you're bringing empathy. You do that to yourself. The judgment goes down. The saboteur disappears. And now you're in nirvana. You do that to another human being as jerky as they are with empathy. They lower their guns. And then now you're starting to see, actually, they're not a narcissist 99% of the time. They just have been with you because you're in your sabotaging pattern that brings it up for them. That's their protection. Wonderful protection. Dismiss your feelings. Easy to do to protect mm. yourself. And now you get so a pathetic, deep conversation with somebody who has been narcissistic for many, many years. And labeling them as narcissistic is a label, it's a judgment. And now all you've got is a narcissist in your life, like a sexual molester as a father. Mm -hmm. So live with that every day and feel how that poisons your, your Petri dish, your culture mm -hmm. in your life. See how sick you're going to get as you repeat that over and over. I'm mm -hmm. not saying put rose colored glasses on. No way. I'm saying get angry. Mm -hmm right? And set proper boundaries. But what you're doing with, with power is you're setting your ability to plan your life. And this is the planning figure, the vision being you're saying, mm -hmm. I want a vision of what is powerful for you and me. And while you're doing this and I'm doing this, we're never going to get to that vision. No. So how do we let our, our guns lay down? And that is true power. And that's why circling back to the start, when a woman connects to her love, that 
and and holds the power from that point with a vision and stop maybe maybe power you need to relax that word think of vision and being able to mm. express vision and quit saying things are wrong because that's judgment say things are missing and what you want that's what power is so power struggles are a failure and your ability to let go of judgment and move to vision in your life. And when you learn this skill, like learning karate or learning, it's a, it's a, it's a spiritual exercise as it much as gratitude is and forgiveness. And when you learn how to do this, and I teach you how to do this, you start to elevate the entire uh, life pattern. And then you move to a place of creativity and then everyone does a vision board and watch what they have done. If you know somebody uh, that I've, I've done that with and you saw, you maybe saw his life as he, you know, reclaimed um, being out of the rat race to getting his plane connected to his wife and his wife's totally different. He's into the past and all that. So uh, that's beautiful. But that was his vision yeah. from a very deep state of suffering. And I said, make the suffering okay. And I think, listen, this is just all so good. I'm not interjecting anything because it's it's just it's just perfection. Um, and I think what's powerful about this is like you can see the soul, the soul mission, the soul driver, the soul potentiality, and then we've got the the physical body, the nervous system, the patterns that are running. I always say that those patterns are also part of our soul's evolution. Like if you're in that pattern you're not wrong, like you're just learning the thing you came to learn and to grow through, but you're destined for breakthrough, not to loop inside the pattern, right? But there are a couple of things I just wanted to touch on, and that is when you talked about there being a massive turning point at the point at which you said, like, absolutely enough is enough. I'm absolutely done. Like, I like if this, I'm done. And you throw your hands up. Mm. That is the exact point that preceded the be beginning of real transformation for me. As there was like yeah. an absolute, like I will tell you, I was literally lying on the floor on my back looking at the ceiling. And I literally said, I'm done. Like I'm so burned out. I can't do this anymore. Like I can't do, like I've got a fabulous life, I, but I, there's something that's completely disconnected. Something is completely mm -hmm. out of alignment and I'm just done, done, done every which way. Baby and style. Yeah. 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 And it's, and what, what, what followed that? was death, 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 like absolute incineration, like death of the separate self, death of all of the parts of me that I had been running as patterns, death of the patterns inside my relationship, literal death around me in my life. Like it was literally the seasonal change of implosion and, you know, um, dissolution in order for something else to be born. And it is what you talked about is like the courage to, stop looking at other people and to st really really own like I have to stop it I have to stop it like stop it stop the pattern stop the pointing outwards if I don't change this then as you said like I'm going to run this until the day I die and I might explode from it you get sick of your own self you also get sick of the pattern and you throw your hands up now if you simultaneously at the same time as that don't give up and just go give up. I'm just going to go and be powerless and helpless and life sucks. If you don't do that and you go, this is a huge opening for me to look really courageously. Like I'm willing to have Brent call me out on my stuff and my hand analysis, or I'm willing for B to call without me out judgment. on my stuff without judgment, but to directly be called out on it. And, accept and to it. actually go, accept it. And go yes, yeah. that is what I do. Yes, I have been being a victim. Yes, I have been running around with defenses up like this, pushing life away and pointing finger outward. And I can totally do that with love, with all the love and empathy, or I cannot do that. And then that creates an opening for really powerful change. Um, and I think the method that you use and the modality and this work that your soul obviously came to do and you're fully in it is just such a magical pathway for that. So for everyone in the community that's listening, um, some of them have already come to you and I highly encourage people to reach yeah. out. So the best thing for them to do is uh, what what pathway do you want them to take if they're like, I'm a yes for that and I want to come and do that? Well, I, I think, you know, everyone just check out the uh, the site, the power in your hands, and you're going to see a 15 minute if you're skeptical about it. Just 
go take positive intelligence and they do the assessment and exchange. I'll, I'll just look at uh, and I'll tell you for five minutes. I won't make a diagram, but I'll just you know show you what what we see and how it works in a deeper way. Uh, or just book a two hour recording right of your entire life pattern, which is what the two hour hand analysis. And I show you the the way that you break through, particularly what is it that you have to surrender and accept and exactly what you will look like if you do that. That's called your exalted self, the area of full self-expression that Katie Byron went through, you went through, Wayne Dyer went through, everybody goes through this process sometime or not in their life. So it's an ancestral pattern and that's your protection. That's your ego side that's there to protect you. And I'm gonna show that to you with empathy and what it would look like. So the best thing is, go to the power in your hands and check out either the 15 or the, or the two hour. Some people enthusiastic may want to consider the shift already, uh, but just try to hand announce, just take it step by step and watch what unfolds and see how your journey looks like every step. And if you like it, go to the next step. And then if you like your mm -hmm. life after that, go to the next step. And then you'll start to see what you know, I've had several hundred people now since I've last read your hands go through all the way up through the hero through the hero's journey, which is a three month program, and they've rocked and rolled, you know, their whole life looks completely different. So just get a fundamental thing, your life looks the way you are. And if you're complaining about it, then whoa, whoa, probably... whoa, whoa, your life looks the way you are. That's right. I mean, you just got yep. back from Hawaii and you walk into a grocery store, everyone's going to look like they just got back from Hawaii, right? Every it's The same thing happens when you shift. When you finish the shift, everyone go walk in a grocery store. You're going to see what I mean. So it, it's a, a, but it's a temporary place. I want to assure you, I haven't brought you to cloud nine. You still have to deal with pain on earth. But yeah. once you have the vision, you anchor it, I go, great. Now you have to practice and anchor systematically this new sense of self it's a part of it's a configuration of your nervous system you're not used to being in that center and it looks unfamiliar even though it feels good and when you get into a trigger it, you you justify going out of it completely so i got to train you to be in that place empathetically and then move you out into the world trying harder and harder situations eventually talking with your ex or maybe even your your uh and, and get your alimony payments <laughs> and get your children. <laughs> I love where your mind goes when you give these examples. I <laughs> just want to be a fly on the wall of all your sessions where you get all these examples. So that 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 you're talking about that, like you have this powerful vision, this soulful vision, that is the power, right? This vision, we're using the word vision, that is the power. And we want to That's soften right. and embody this loving this loving presence, using love as this power from within us, not having to use judgment and ego. So we're balancing this loving state with this vision, this power, and being able to have this and this, not one or the other, not down in here, no vision or vision, but running yeah. my patterns. We, we're out of the patterns. We're able to hold that loving state and have the power of our vision and our soul mission and have them working together. Yeah, we're not here to no. change your ego, right? You're not going to, I'm not going to change your personality type any more than I'm going to change that you're a woman. What you're here, like I said, is you need to surrender and accept that you have a certain biological ancestral, because you'll see it once you do the shift, your grandparents gave this biology to go into this pattern with you to protect you from major situations. And thank God, right? So you want that be able to protect yourself in stress. And it doesn't have to be being chased by a lion these days. Clearly, you still need to protect yourself in stress. But you also need to be able to relax like a herd animal when you're in green pastures and really fast and move into a creative space as fast as possible because you're on a soul mission. So you need mm -hmm. both of those. Yes. And there's, a, there's an architecture for this and an architecture for this. And then when you understand it, it's beautiful how they integrate. And then you can hold both worlds there as a father that I am to my my darling two little uh, kids. I've certainly become a better husband uh, to my wife even recently, having done some serious uh, breakthrough work recently because of the surrender process and the acceptance within it. So because Beautiful. in the hand, hand analysis world, 
you'll see a lot of judgmental people and palmas a lot of judgmental people because they see your pattern like ha it's on you <laughs> i've got <Right>? you <laughs> it's just a judgment it's just that and so that doesn't help knowing somebody's it's like a, being a how many therapists have i read that are totally critical and judgmental and detached and mm. totally ah terrible human being that's sometimes. why i love talking to you and our shared friends that we know which we're blessed to be in like a circle of right. these other amazing human beings that we've realized that we both know and um i just love like the the shared um soulful connection i feel with you and with them is this complete mm. and utter like complete openness like, oh, yeah, my, these are my patterns and, you know, like and this is what I d- did about it and this is how it plays out. There's no, like, there's no, like, bravado. There's no shell. There's no wall. There's no, you know, hiding it. There's no trying to pretend to be something or someone. There's just, like, a huge heart. A human being. And a I lot think. of... <laughs> yeah a lot of human a lot of human being a lot of acceptance yeah. of the human messiness um yeah and and because of that that's so magnetic like that's so powerful to mm. see the authenticness coming through instead of seeing a pattern coming at you or a shell up that's like everything's fine <laughs> i'm fine <laughs> right it's just so refreshing and rewarding so your website www.thepowerinyourhands.com go check right. it out Brent's got his 15 minute, his hand analysis, two hours, his shift and the hero's journey. It's amazing. He's amazing. I'm so grateful to you that the universe somehow brought you into my life. And we're both on the planet at the same time. (laughs) Big hugs. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you for your time.